And good morning everyone. Lola Palooza has officially kicked off here at Abilene State Park in beautiful sunny Texas here. We got our Lola Palooza shirts handed out that uh, Blind Views designed for the event. Then we watched uh, his live party from the pavilion over here. Well, some, some of us did. Other people were staying in their rigs. And then Lola introduced the event and Vicky let us take some pictures in front of the official 2021 picture frame. And we got our schedules and itinerary and it is now the following morning so we've already had some uh, pastries and coffee and stuff in the pavilion over there and we're getting ready for event one on Saturday morning 10 a.m. Gypsy Pear, uh, Dennis and Debbie over in their class A over there are hosting the cooking competition which I did not uh, enter myself into last year but I am doing it this year. The rules to start are you must bring four ingredients that are exactly alike. So I got my ingredients. Four individual packets of cheddar shredded cheese. I am not gonna make this difficult like other people like to do. Last year we had what, sardines. Uh, somebody brought individual packets of seaweed. <laughs> One, I have to use one of those ingredients also, so you're only killing your own group. It's competition, all right? All right, thanks for joining me, guys. I will be uploading this video with Nomad Internet. Link below in the video description if you need some mobile unlimited internet. Let's get this party started. Checking out what Rex, Rex got chicken ramen noodles. I want to be part of your group. I can, I can work with that. Can't work with seaweed or anchovies or... <laughs> Texaroni? See, I could work with that, too. This is looking promising. All right, all right. Here we go. We're drawing numbers. Shake them up. Number three. Number three. I am number two. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's my group members. We're competing. <laughs> now we find out what everybody's got. French fried onions. All right. I'll trade you for one of those. Ooh, yum. Some celery there. And chicken. Perfect. I need everyone in this building for judging. I need you to vote. Even the cooks can vote because, hey, you're just one vote. Well, geez, I'd vote for me. <laughs> that was actually a pretty good draw. Now I'm super excited. Let's see what I've got to make. Huh. Because the rules are we have to use those four ingredients, but we can use anything else we want. I've got some grilled chicken. I've got TV dinners. I've got tater tots. And what else do I have? I have some hamburger meat. I also have some other hamburger meat that I could cook up. Let me think here. Wait a minute. I'm seeing something. Tater tot casserole <laughs> with chicken, fried onions, diced celery on top with cheese. Yes. So I'm, I'm going to ground that beef though. It's going to be a beef and chicken tater tot casserole. Okay. All right. So we'll start here. I'm going to ground one pound of ground beef. I'm going to add some uh, lemon, lemon pepper to it a little bit here on top some salt and uh, we'll brown this while that's working i'm going to multitask i'm going to dice up the uh, celery ingredient there i also found a can of cream of potato soup so i'm going to use this as my paste in the middle of my tater tot casserole so i'll dice this up be keeping an eye on the ground beef over here also and then when i get done with the beef i gotta do up that chicken too All right, looks like my ground beef is uh, looking good here. I'm gonna drain out some of the extra liquid here. But yep, that looks done. And I had to uh, borrow a casserole dish uh, from Randy 2.0, because I didn't have one. I'm going to uh, spray the old inside of this. Don't get any stickage, all right. I'm gonna get a layer of ground beef on the bottom there. Oh yeah, mix that out. Oh, that's going to be perfect. That cream of potato in here. That'll thicken up that layer of the tater tot casserole. Okay. And add the celery. I know there's a bunch of people thinking, you can't use cream of potato in a tater tot casserole. You sure can. I've done this before. I wouldn't normally voluntarily add greens to it necessarily, but... <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Hopefully that celery in the oven is going to uh, soften up a little bit, but 
yeah, there's my paste. All right, and I'm going to uh, cut up and, and then grill the chicken. I'll put this all in the fry pan there. All right, well, I was gonna add chicken because I didn't think there was enough, but we already have the beef, so I'm actually okay with the amount of chicken that we got just from the one ingredient. It's just gonna add a little bit of extra flavor to it there. Yeah. Before we spread on the paste, though, I'm gonna add a little bit of onion powder for seasoning there. Just a little bit there. Okay, and some minced garlic. Not gonna go crazy heavy, but about there. Let me mix that all up. All right, and now I will add the creamy paste on top with my cream of potato, celery, and garlic with my Mickey hand spatula there. And then get a good layer of that over the meat. I'm just not a big fan of celery, but it was my ingredient, so I have to use it, and I have to just hope that cooking in the oven is going to soften the celery and make it less potent. But there. Then finally, my ingredient, the shredded cheddar cheese. <laughs> I'm going to save a little bit of this for the uh, top layer of tater tots, but I want to get about half this bag here on there for this layer. Yeah, let's, let's save the other half. All right, that looks good. Next. Frozen tater tots. The whole five pound bag? No, probably not. <laughs> I don't know, just make a layer of tater tots. Make a nice layer. I don't think I can fit any more in there. Okay. I'm gonna bake this at 350 degrees for 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna pull it out and put more cheese on it for another little bit, but that is looking good. Is the oven ready? Oh, and in case you're thinking I skipped one of my ingredients, no, this is actually going to go on at the very end also. So after 30 minutes of baking, I'll put the french fried onions on with a little more cheese, but we're going to hold off on this. The oven is ready and willing to accept 30 minutes. Okay, we got 14 minutes left and I am starting to feel the pressure just a little bit. Let's see. Oh my gosh, look at that. That looks amazing. Let's put the finishing touches on her. Sprinkle on some fried onions on top there. Oh, they actually look really good with the tater tots there. Huh, I love it. Okay, I'm happy with that. And some more cheese. Mm. Gotta be the right amount, I think. I think I'm happy with it right there. <laughs> Back in the oven she goes for about five minutes and we are just barely going to make it here. All right. All right, four minutes to go, moment of truth. Did I pull this off? <laughs> oh boy, yeah, let's go. I mean, we'll see how it tastes in just a minute and what everybody thinks, but I think I should get a presentation award. That's beautiful. I have lots of judges in the room. We're gonna yeah. taste all these. Let's see what we got. Where do we get the card? Oh, man. Uh -huh. Oh, it's actually made like a cheese sauce. There's mine. Ooh. Huh. Rex, can we peek in here real quick? Yeah, absolutely. Nice, right on. There are paper judges here. Uh, you will vote on one dish. You need the name of the dish, and it will go in the voting box and you will sign that you voted. All right, have at it. Now this is interesting. This is a tie for a first place. And I'm going to read the ingredients because they're not the same person or the same ingredients. One of them had ginger root, mushroom soup, Texas noodles, and green chilies. The other one had chicken, shredded cheddar cheese, celery, and fried onions. Oh my gosh. Ooh. So now you know who the two winners are. No. In your mind, you think you, you just do. read the ingredients. With the Mexican chicken casserole, come forward. All right, I'm voting for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> and then, oh yeah. Then on a 
know what to say about this, no. but <laughs> tater tot casserole. <laughs> 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 that was a little wow. obvious. <laughs> so for the second year in a row here at Lola Palooza, we had a tie. So we tied for cooking. Awesome. That was a lot of fun. Mexican chicken casserole. And it was really, really good. Thank you. Yeah, this was fun. That is the first and probably the only time I will ever win a cooking challenge. <laughs> I got to kiss the chef uh, red apron here because I, you know, tied for first. Hey, what did we learn? Don't be a tater hater. That was a lot of fun. There were a lot of really creative dishes in that room and that basically counted as an entire lunch for everybody here. So that's a really fun little event that we do here. There's lots more going on and um, I'm really enjoying all my time interacting and meeting some new viewers. It's just been a plethora of support you know, for the loss and everything going on in my life, as well as, I'm just gonna say it, there's been a lot of happy distractions going on here at Lollapalooza, and these are my people. Like, everybody here is my people, and um, I'm also talking with people and finding out where where those people might be heading after Lollapalooza. Um, most people are heading west, okay? Uh, but I myself, I do have to go back to my base camp in Texas to pick up a few things that are going to be there waiting for me after this event. So I'll find myself almost back down in Houston area. So now I'm thinking about just kind of making the loop and possibly going back to the coast and coming up through El Paso. But, but who knows? I'm just having a blast here. It's another really warm, beautiful, sunny day in Texas in late October. So just uh, having some having some fun and uh, still looking to see if anybody has any cornhole, you know, beanbag toss. Billy's here now and he saved us and brought cornhole. We got beanbag toss. Thank you, buddy. plate here got some of my pulled pork just pulled chicken rice and brisket and sausage oh yeah we're doing uh, raffles right now so they're calling off some numbers up there Three, nine. nope so I wasn't filming it but they just called my number <laughs> And I got uh, uh, three books by Deborah Dickinson, who's here. The Journey Begins, Life on the Road. Somebody's excited over there. Yeah, cool, awesome. Looking forward to reading these. I got some really sweet cards from different viewers. And then Aubrey from a Full Tiny House drew this little picture. It says Jack's on his name tag there. Hmm, it really makes me happy. Yeah, hey guys. I'm still out here at Abilene State Park. You probably have no idea that I've actually spent eight nights here. Today is day nine at Abilene State Park. And I'm over here at the Buffalo Wallow area here. Beautiful sunshine. We have had some absolutely incredible weather. Um, I am going to be leaving today. I did extend it out even farther. Uh, I'm not the last one here. RV Rebel Girl, Frugal, Lone Star Rider, and Full Tiny House are also still here in our camping loop over there. But this afternoon, after I leave, they're actually hosting a wedding here in the Wagon Wheel Circle. They're having a wedding. So, it's time, to, time to get out of here, I guess. It's just, it's been really awesome for me and I have, Truly, truly love this state park. It's uh, very reasonable there at our camping loop, 12 bucks a night. 
And then you gotta have your vehicle access pass or your Texas State Park Pass. I don't know why I don't have a Texas State Park Pass because I love most Texas State Parks that I've been to here. However, my package, I don't know how I feel about this. I mentioned um, in a couple videos ago that I was having problems with escapees, my mail service domicile place in uh, Livingston, Texas. Well, they decided to reject Jax's ashes. After all that, they just returned it to sender and sent me an email and said they didn't like a sticker on the box, so they sent that back as well. And um, I'm trying to, trying to figure out something else to do. Probably going to be shipping it back to my shop or Sean's shop in Illinois. And um, I don't know, I, I got a, a lot of stuff on my mind right now, guys. I'm really thankful for this awesome weather and this event that Lola put on. Thank you again, Lola and Blind Views and everybody else who did so much to make this one of the best Lola Paloozas ever. Uh, and, and especially just all the people, uh, it felt really good to give hugs. Like for some reason, it's just, I just, man, it just felt so, so good to connect with people, you know? But yeah, and, and anyway, just, I've really been enjoying all the peace as well through all the activities and everything. But anyway, this video is getting really long and I didn't want it to get this long. So I'm going to go ahead and close this one out. I'm still going to start heading back east just to kind of see what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it because I got some confusion right now. But I'm going to figure it out in my next video or something. OK, so thanks for joining me, guys. Tara and I will see you in our next video. I love you all. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Lola, may I say that you have the best shirt here? <laughs> One of the original Don't Be a Tater Hater shirts. I love it in the green. Thank you so much for putting this on. This is really a lot of fun. Thank you, Lola.